All right, so let's delete this character. This is another thing that they need to figure out a different way to do this. Deleting a character. Type in the name of the character. The character doesn't have a name. So I have to go space. Whoop. Whoop. Space backspace delete. The name is the last thing I ever come up with. I don't I don't understand. Like me personally, I'm not the kind of person that starts with a character's name. So you'll be back later tonight, fair enough. Um so like having the name be the very first thing on the character builder and be the thing that requires you to type it in to delete the character is like what? But I mean some people may do it differently than that. All right, let's call this person there we go, Burke. So that Athos knows what I'm building here. I'm sure this will increase as time goes on. It would also be nice if they had like, like filters. So you could say like elf, orc, animal. Other. That way you don't have to like stare at all these different options. I don't see a portrait that would fit this character in the slightest. Oh, I just died. I guess the closest might be this person. Maybe that person. But damn, look at those ears. Holy crap. Doesn't matter. Alright. Ancestry. Uh, human... Because that's where you get half elves. Select. Human heritage. Half elf. Wait, what is the half elf? Because this is I'm I'm basing all of my knowledge off of like previous D and D five E knowledge, so I'm like, this may not actually be what I want. But I guess as a human you get the uh you get the boosts, so it doesn't really matter. Select two ability scores or the default, which is select two ability scores. <laughs> Fine. Uh Dex. But what does Dex actually do in Pathfinder? Because it's different in Pathfinder. I think it still applies. Uh, reflex saves. Yeah, that would still apply. And charisma is still like performance or um, charm and int intimidate, deception, stuff like that. Or is dexterity performance now? I say now like it's changed. <laughs> Or spell casting. Okay. Aren't paladins, or or I guess champions, aren't they charisma based spellcasters in uh, Pathfinder? Seems seems like strange to me. Body obstinacy. Your powerful ego, ego makes it harder for others to order you around. If a creature rolls a failure on a check to coerce you using intimidation, it gets a critical failure. So are clerics. I guess some of the cleric spell list is charisma and some is probably wisdom. Cooperative. Plus four to aid. Psh, no. 
If you prepare spells without a spell book, one of your cantrips must always be the chosen spell. And you prepare the rest normally. Wait, what? Choose one cantrip from a magical tradition other than your own. If you have a spell casting repertoire or a spell book, replace one of the cantrips you know with or have in your spell book with this chosen spell. Okay. Seems so weird. Nature, no. Natural ambition, maybe. You gain a first level class feat for your class. You must meet the prerequisites, but you can select the later you can select the feat later in character creation in order to determine which prerequisite to meet. Interesting. Audi obstinacy would fit better. Alright. Background, which is your hist see this is this is all really weird. I think class should come before background. So the layout of stuff is it just, in my mind, doesn't jive. Like, I would go... I would go... Ancestry. So, like, all this is fine. Then I would go class and do all the class stuff. Then I would go background. Oh, it's the ABCs of Pathfinder. Ancestry, background, class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then definitely don't mix that up. Because that would be strange to mix that up. That's like already an established thing. Right, background. Acrobat? Circus on the streets. Uh, yeah, I guess that's pr that's probably going to be the closest. I don't see anything being closer to that. Entertainer, maybe? Entertain crowds. Ah. You gain the fascinating performance. Oh, did they fix this? Bro, I think they fixed this. Sick. When you perform, compare your result to the will DC of one observer. If you succeed, the target is fascinated for a round. I don't know what fascinated is. Uh, if the observer is in a situation that demands immediate attention, such as combat, you must critically succeed to fascinate it. Uh, and the perform action gains the incapacitation. Interesting. You must choose which creature you're trying to fascinate before you roll your check. And the target is temporarily immune for one hour. If you're an expert in performance, you can fascinate up to four observers. If you're a master, it's ten. If you're legendary, it's any number. Charmed? Yeah, that's what I was kind of considering fascinating to be. It's essentially 5e's, 5e's single round charm just like oh. that's actually perfect so we're going with entertainer for now mm -hmm. yeah entertainer it is Luck Entertainer. Ability Boost. Uh, Charisma. Then we're gonna go Dex. Okay, Class. Bard. Spell casting is still under development, that's okay. The ability is Charisma. 8 plus my Con modifier for hit points. Which is currently zero. Hey, that's fair. No worries, Death. Class option uses. As a bard, you can select a muse at level one. This muse leads you to great things. 
Your muse, uh, Enigma. Okay, so I can look at those later. Okay, select Bard. Occult spellcasting. There are no spells yet. Ability boosts. Well, if my key is charisma, then let's keep pumping charisma. Uh, do some wisdom. Right, skill training, acrobatics, wait, do I get four? Performance is already trained. Okay, I was going to say, let's go performance. Uh, stealth, thievery. And probably deception seems good for a a circus performer. Muse, here we go. <clears throat> your muse is a mystery, driving you to uncover the hidden secrets of the multiverse. If your muse is a creature, it might be a dragon or an otherworldly being. Idiot might be Garori or Nethus. Gain of Bardic Lore. Okay. Okay. And you add True Strike to my spells. True Strike Verbal. Glimpse into the future ensures your next blow strikes true. The next time you make an attack roll... Before the end of your turn, <clears throat> roll the attack roll twice and use the better result. Okay, so it just gives me advantage. The attack ignores circumstance penalties. Better than advantage. Uh, any flat check required due to the target being concealed or hidden. Wow, dude, that is insane. True Strike is so good. Gain Lingering Composition. You grace the target's mind, boosting its mental defenses and healing its wounds. 1d10 plus 4 hit points are gained. And then it also gains plus 2 status bonus to saves against mental effects. Get away. Get away. <laughs> what is polymath? Versatile performance. You can use performance instead of diplomacy to make an inspiration. And instead of intimidation to demoralize. You can also use an acting performance instead of deception to impersonate. Uh, you can use your proficiency rank and performance to meet the requirements of skill feats that would require deception, diplomacy, or intimacy. Unseen servant. Or warrior. Martial performance and fear. Well, fear is self-explanatory. Become trained with all martial weapons. If you gain the Bard Weapon Expertise class feature, your proficiency rank with martial weapons increases to expert. Okay, I think we're going to go with... We're going to go with the Enigma. Of 
hard feet. Wow. Well, these are dedications. Holy crap. Poly oh, re prerequisites, polymath. I don't have polymath. I'm using what? Enigma. Well, that should go, that shouldn't even be an option, right? That should be like grayed out. Two additional cantrips. Directed audience. They added a filter? Oh, they did. Dedication, no. Oh, ignore prerequisites is cur does not work, apparently. <laughs> it's, it's off and I can't turn it on, but it is actually on. Weird. Huh. So if we hit that... The dedications are still there. Dedication true? Wait, what? Wow. Alright, that filter needs work. <laughs> wow. That, this filter is not... Like, it is not... Like, dedication. False. Why? Dedications are still there. Like, there's a clear filter, but you can't see the filters you already have in place. If they're stacking filters. Okay, traits barred. The ignore is off right now. Well, if it's off, then it shouldn't be ignoring. And it also won't let me turn it on. All right, anyway. Filters are, are jank, okay. Um, This is also in Chrome, by the way. They told me that Chrome works best. It's, no, yeah, it's still alpha, still alpha. <laughs> Uh, you can shape the area of your composition spells. When you cast a composition spell whose area is an emanation, you can change the spell's area to a cone of 10 feet or larger, 10 feet larger, or to a maximum of twice the original area. For example, you could modify a composition that has a 30-foot emanation into a 40-foot cone, but a 5-foot emanation can only become a 10-foot. I think I need to see druidic spells to figure out how some of this stuff works. That requires polymath. Maestro. Enigma. Magically unlock memories, making them easier to recall. You learn the lore master's attuned composition spell and increase the number of focus points in my pool by one. You or an ally within range attempts a skill check to recall knowledge. Call upon your muses. Okay, roll the triggering recall knowledge skill check twice to use the better result. Okay. That's mediocre at best. Your muse fall, uh, doesn't fall into a single label. Choose 
a type of muse other than the one you own, you gain a first level feat that requires that muse, and your muse is now a muse of that type, allowing you to take... So this is like changing... Your studies make you informed on every subject. You are trained in bardic lore, special lore skill that can only be used to recall knowledge, but on any topic. You have a legendary proficiency in occultism, an expert proficiency in bardic lore. You can't increase your proficiency rank in bardic lore by any other means. Hmm. There's yes and no. Oh, do I meet the requirements? Oh, maybe by default, I think the nose should drop to the bottom. That's just me, though. Reach spell. You can extend your spell's reach. The next action you use is a cast a spell that has a range. Increase that range's... Increase the spell's range by 30 feet. If it's a stand... If as is standard for increasing spell ranges, if the spell normally has a range of touch, you extend its range to 30 feet. Well, that's just, that's just straight up good. Required. Look at all these no's. Requirements. <laughs> Exhort the faithful. See details. Maybe? An expert in religion or a follower of a specific religion. Oh, it's all just no, 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 no. Don't meet any of these requirements. No, 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 no. Uh, cool. I don't mean the requirements of any of these. Yeah, no, I know I'm on page two, but I started, I'm on page one. All these are no. Page two, we start at the bottom. All these are no. Page three, start at the bottom. All of these are no. Sign language. Trained in society. Trained in society. Fooled in secrets. Uh, uh, wait. I should be trained in occultism. Did I miss something back here? No? Oh. I am trained in occultism. Well, that seems uh, inaccurate. Hmm. 
acrobatic performer. Use acrobatics to perform. Yeah, see, I'm also trained in acrobatics. You can roll an acrobatics instead of performance check to do the perform action. Alright. I guess I'm just going to have to do the requirements myself. Re reduce the bonus against your repeated lies. <laughs> so you can just lie like crazy and they don't get bonuses to checking you out. That's funny. Distracting performance. Create a diversion for an ally. I am not an expert in performance. Rapid Mantle, Robust Recovery. Wary Disarmament. Okay, I'm leaning towards Acrobatic Performer. Does that make sense for what I'm going for? I could also go with Catfall. Group Coercion. Make an impression with your performance. So you can use your performance instead of diplomacy. I thought that said quick sneeze. <laughs> I was all like, why the hell would you need a quick sneeze? Page three. There is no page three. Page two and page three appear to be the same. Let's go to page one, page three. Well, that's weird. Page 3 duplicates whatever page you were just on. So there actually is no page 3. Okay, that's a problem. Alright. So for now, we're gonna go with... Acrobatic Performer, I think. Alright, level 3. General feat. Let, wait, let's go skill increase first. Uh, let's increase... Gotta send the VOD to Pete later. Yeah. Yeah, there's some there's still some some issues that are like eh, like like it is alpha. Understand that. Um Performance, I guess.
yeah the requirements doesn't seem to work properly the page numbers don't seem to work all that well what version of chrome am i on 109-0-54-14-120. Just in case that makes a difference. Okay. The page 3 here works, but page 4 does what page 3 did on the other one. So it looks like the last page just duplicates whatever page you come from. Weird. Well, see, now here at the bottom of the list are the ones that say I meet the requirements. Weird. I have to be trained in society for that one. Subtle theft. Your thefts are harder to notice. Man, creating a thief, just a straight up thief rogue, uh, would be very interesting. There's so many, like, <clears throat> there's so many different feats and uh, abilities that make your ability to steal from someone more efficient. Virtuosic Performer. You have an exceptional talent with one type of performance. You gain a plus one circumstance bonus when making a certain type of performance. If I'm a master, it's plus two. Select one of the following specialties and apply the bonus when attempting persuasion, that check. persuasion checks of that type. If you're unsure, ask the GM. It's not winds or strings or singing or percussion or oratory, oratory, not keyboards. Uh, it's not acting. It's probably not comedy. What would you say, Athos? Would you call juggling dance or comedy or acting? I guess because puppetry is acting, right? Probably not comedy, then. Drama, pantomime, and puppetry. I think I would probably lean more towards acting than dance, but...
You'd lean more towards dance. Alright, well, you're the DM. But we would say dance. I guess because of the high level of... Um, the high level of, like, intricacy required. It would be like hand dancing, I guess. That's a good way to put it. <clears throat> Bardic feet. Does page two work here? Bounty hunter dedication, and if I go to page two, that is wizard dedication. Weird. I saw the juggler archetype, but like I don't get I don't get an archetype for bards. That may be because that may be because uh That may be because spellcasting isn't in there yet. Oh no, archetype is um Archetype is multiclassing kind of. I saw the juggling thing in there one time, and I went to go look for it, and I can't find it now. I don't know where it is. I think I saw it on, on Pathfinder Builder. Right, anyway. The AP isn't done on Demiplane. What is AP? He ask. Adventure... Things? Adventure Path. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw on their Discord that somebody was asking about the, um, they used the same terminology I used. They called them the same thing they're called in d and um, <sighs> Now I can't even think of what it's called in D&D. Anyway, they called it that, and, and in Discord they were like, we're going, we're getting the base thing working first. Then once once it's out of like alpha and beta and it's like the base modules, thank you. Once once it's all out, then they'll go back and start adding in uh, adventure path stuff. But they're like they definitely want to do all of that. They just want to get like the base game, the base the game, the base builder working for the core rule book and the advanced player's guide, and that's basically it. Which makes sense, you know, if 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 stuff is broken in the, the core rulebook and the advanced player's guide, uh, you need to get all of that working first. Then you can add in some more of the uh, customized, intricate stuff. Subtly weave your spell casting into your performance. Interesting. If you do, if your performance check is successful against an observer's perception, that observer doesn't notice that I'm casting a spell, even though normally spells have sensory manifestations that would make spell casting obvious to those around you. You hide all of these as part of my ordinary performance. This hides only the spell's spellcasting actions and manifestations, not its effects. So an observer might still see a ray streak out from you, uh, or see you vanish. Well, yeah, that makes sense. But it's it's like if you're starting, let's say you were you were doing a performance and you want to start combat. The bard could start combat without triggering a uh, 
without triggering a reaction from the enemy. So you'd get like a... Not exactly a surprise round, but you'd essentially get surprise on the opponents, perhaps. I remember hearing somewhere that surprise rounds aren't a thing in uh, Pathfinder. Triple time. You learn triple time. Which speeds up your allies around you. You and your allies in the area have plus 10 foot status. Oh, wow, this is weird. The, the wording is, is kind of a little awkward. You and all your allies in the area gain a plus 10 foot status bonus to all speeds for one round. Okay. One round they can move 10 feet further, which is two, two hexes, right? DM rolls a secret occultism check for you against the deception or stealth DC, whichever is higher of an enemy. Uh, the GM might apply a penalty for the distance uh, between you and the enemy. The enemy is then temporarily immune to combat reading. On a critical success, the GM chooses and tells you two of the following pieces of information about the enemy. Which of the enemy's weaknesses is the highest? Which of their saving throws has the lowest modifier? an immunity that the enemy has, or which of the enemy's resistances is highest. In the event of a tie, the GM should pick one at random. On a success, the GM chooses one piece of information from the above list, and on a critical failure, the GM gives you false information. Ah, <laughs> oh, rip. I also watched somebody's explanation of critical successes and critical failures uh, on YouTube, and the whole, like, you can roll a natural 20 and not get a critical success, but you can also roll a natural 1 and not get a critical failure. Um, that being said, you can also roll like a 4 and get a critical failure, or an 18 and get a critical success. So they kind of explained that a little better. Oh, that's... Enigma Muse, an expert in occultism. Triple time's probably a good one. Is it 60 feet? Yeah, that's pretty far. Oh no, it was this one, Melodious. One where you can cast a spell while you're performing and they don't notice. Or do they have a penalty to noticing? Wait a second. Okay, so it's not that the final page duplicates what's on the page you came from. 
it looks like the final page it looks like each page has a number of items that it wants to fill and the final page may only have like let's say the number of items max per page is 20 but what if there's 46 items right so you'd have three pages 20 on page one 20 on page two and six on page three but because the full page wants to fill 20 items the last 14 are filled with whatever came from the page you were just looking at because the top of page two is bot mod uh, or bond mod and the top of page three even though the bottoms look the same the top is recognized spell that's a problem I think part of that is part of this is when you switch pages it doesn't shoot you to the top it should probably shoot you to the top when you switch pages instead of staying at the bottom uh, but in addition the final page should truncate the number of items depending on how many are left. Because it doesn't seem to do that. So weird. Okay. Automatic knowledge, battle planner. Bonded animal. You can get this for anything? Oh, you need to be an expert in nature. Magical crafting, craft magical items. Okay, let's skip that. Skill increase, let's go. Theater lore, that's hilarious. Maybe occultism. That sounds fun. Wait, occultism is intelligence? Ability boosts. Yeah, we'll do that. Wait, how did I lose? Wait, do I get skill training based on my intelligence? Is it like four plus your intelligence modifier? Oh, that's sick. Let's go society. There's there's some societal stuff that would be really useful. I could just gain training in another skill.
ability boosts. Yeah, once you get to 18, they go up by one, don't they? Go dex. Intelligence. Constitution. Uh... Let's go ahead and put it into Charisma, because then next time I get ability boosts, I can put one more into Charisma and get plus five. Yeah, see, now I have... This has opened up skill training again. Master in performance. Sick. Willing allies that you are aware of within 60 feet that would otherwise be det undetected are inst by you are instead hidden. A flat check for you to target willing allies within 60 feet that are hidden from you is 5 instead of 11. That seems incredibly uh, niche. It seems like crazy niche. Learned how to handle situations in which you are out of your depth. Your proficiency bonus to untrained skills is equal to half of your level instead of zero. You are seventh level or higher, the bonus is increased to your full level instead. This doesn't allow you to use the skilled skills trained action. So it's essentially it's just for like checks. If your allies are hidden in combat, you need that to spot and spell cast. Do you? I thought it was undetected. Undetected means you have no idea that there are people even there. Hidden means you know people are there, you just don't know where they are. So... Well, I do have dark vision because I'm a half elf. Half elves have dark vision. So that's not an issue.
Well, half elves have low light. Or a rule book. Wow, this is this is the basics. What is dice? <laughs> okay, a vision. Their vision. Six ability scores. Nope, I know that. Use an ancestry. Ancestry summaries. All right, this isn't wide enough to fit everything. That's weird. Classes. Ah, oh, there's only four base classes? Oh no. Never mind. I'm just an idiot. Ancestries and backgrounds. Here we go. Uh, human. Half elves. It doesn't say anything about vision. What just happened? Snap me back to the top. Come on, man. Uh, where the heck was I? Ancestries. Human. Half elves. No, because then it just goes to half orcs. Oh, here we go. You gain the elf trait and the half elf trait and low light vision. Okay. Why does it keep popping back up to the top? All right. Where'd my semicolon come from? Low. Light. Light. Ancestries. Okay. Light. Low light vision. There we go. You can see in dim light as though it were bright light. So you can you can ignore the concealed condition due to dimmed light. So uh Come on, man! Why are you doing this to me? Hit point, size, speed, ability boosts, ability flaws, languages, I guess traits? So low light vision is basically dawn and dusk, and dark vision is nighttime. 
as well as like low torch lights or unlit dungeons, stuff like that. Interesting. What? Bro, this book reading is is janky. It keep like after after every so often, it just defaults you back to the go away. Go away. Got to fix that. All right, so that's an interesting now they actually have go to character sheet. I don't think that was there last time I did this. No, this was here. Never mind. Oh, that's roll initiative. Okay. It's so weird to see 58 hit points. That's just, that feels so weird. That's huge. I think my roughly equivalent D&D &D Beyond bard at level 4 has like 25 hit points. I feel like I should be able to scroll further, I just can't. Oh, these scroll individually. Interesting. No, no, I understand. I, I, I'm well aware, I've been, I've been made well aware that Numbers in general are just higher. But like my damage output is higher, but my damp my incoming damage is also higher. That's why my HP is higher and my AC is higher. I'm also unarmored and I have an AC of 21. I guess that's my dex coming into play there, but... <laughs> I would also think that here, instead of human bard, it should say... I don't know. Like, yeah, I am human, and there's the sub-ancestry, or whatever it's called, that makes me half-elf. Um, but I would think you would have that one first, so like, half-elf human. Maybe? What is that, what is that actually called? It's not a sub-ancestry. Is it like ancestry and heritage or something? Yes, yeah, a human half elf. Like say that, right? Human heritage, that's what it is. Yeah, because being a half elf is significantly different from being human, you know? From being a unmodified human. It's not like there are some minor differences that you just you can like adjust for. There are some some significant changes that happen for half elf and for others, you know. Like for the leshy, there were all those different kind all those different heritages of leshy, and every single one of them had different like 
pros and cons. Exception plus nine. That's actually pretty good. Trying to look at this. This all seems pretty good. As far as like judging the layout. Temp. Oh, temporary hit points. I have seen I have seen stuff in there that we're talking about like different levels of temperature for hot and cold. And that's what I initially saw when I thought when I saw that, but it is under the hit points sub subheading, so what is this spot for? Oh. Big area right here for speed and perception. I don't know what that is. Active conditions. This all seems pretty um rest and re what is refocus? This is probably spells. It's probably like relearn spells. Oh yeah, flight and swim speed. Perception for other kinds of senses. Maybe. Because you can have vision, hearing, uh... I guess it would be visual, auditory, um, smell, whatever smell is called, olfactory, tremor sense, yeah. Though tremor sense would be a, it would be an ability, wouldn't it? <laughs> Life sense. I feel like I'm alive. What's that? I'm sense we're going down. Equipment. Add container? Not available yet. Add item. Okay, items exist. Adamantine armor. <laughs> like how they're like. Yeah, see, filter. Okay, this, this shouldn't be filtered. This should be called search. Because if you put armor, right, it only goes off of name and, well, it does do type as well. But why is arrow here? Right? Arsenic? What? That doesn't make a whole lot of, whole lot of sense. There should be fil there should be like right here there should be icons that have like a sword, a shield, um uh, you know, there there should be something that looks like a like a potion bottle, so it'll be like small items. Uh there should be something that looks like an arrow for like ammunition. Um I'm sure a couple of others I can't think of off the top of my head money yeah where's money details all right go away replace deities weight height age gender appearance attitude okay that's all fine campaign notes there doesn't seem to be a place to keep track of money equipment perhaps No. I can add an item. Gold. Okay. Yeah, there needs to be a place to track money. Explorer's clothing. That could be under equipment. It would just need to be like a... 
feats and features. I also feel like the scrolling is weird. The scrolling feels weird. Like, I scroll down, and this... I'm gonna call it a pain, because I haven't used... I haven't done web development in, like, 20 years. And that's what they were 20 years ago. But this pane right here also scrolls separate from the page. And that feels weird. I'd rather just have the pane be static, full size, and have me scroll the page down. That feels, that, that feels odd to me. That, like, there's separate... There's separate panes of information. Like, it was also here, right? Like, these two panes of information can be scrolled separately from each other. But the page only goes down this far. Nope, the, paint, the page goes farther. Like, I'll scroll the page all the way, right? That's as far as the page goes. And I can see skills and actions at the top. As soon as I start scrolling, I get to the bottom of the pane... I can move the page a little further. That's weird. That doesn't feel... That doesn't... To me, that doesn't feel good. Either that, or put a scroll bar in these... In the, in the panes. Put, like, one of those scroll bars that, like, disappears when you mouse off of it. Like, you'd mouse over and the scroll bar would appear. But it feels weird to do- it feels bad to do that, like... Like, instinctually to me, it just... Like, skills, actions, scroll, 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 and then it scrolls again. Weird. It doesn't- it doesn't feel good. So, that needs to be adjusted. Uh, again, I'm going to repeat this multiple times. This is all alpha. Totally understand. Um, that it's it's not going to feel perfect or, or look look exactly right. Okay. That's another thing. Like the panes aren't don't appear to be uh, consistent from tab to tab. So like skills and actions this dark gray box with the black title, that's a pain. They may have a different term for it, but those are those are separate. But if I come over here to details... Okay, so this is a pain, right? But if I scroll down, it stops halfway through this, and now the whole set goes when I scroll in that area. That also feels weird. So now it's not each box, it's actually the whole column is a separate pane. Very strange. It, it feels wrong. I don't know how... How I would fix that other than... Than like, at least like a, an easy fix on this page would be to let me just scroll the actual site down the whole way. To get to the bottom of campaign notes without having to scroll that section. Weird. Uh, okay. Go back over here. Let's do a fun one. Let's break things. Huzzah! You would prefer more of a horizontal design to avoid scrolling. The unused space on the side seems like a waste. I also tend to agree, but uh, from a... I'm not a programmer. I'm not a web designer. I do work in IT. So I have... While I don't know how a lot of the intricacies of the systems work, I have an idea of what they're doing. And... 
the the concept of leaving all that extra space on the side is so that they can take the web version of the builder and more easily migrate it to a mobile device like a cell phone uh and hopefully keep as much of the design the same between the web interface and the mobile interface obviously there will be differences uh but a lot will be similar so i can kind of see why they do that I also agree with you. I don't like the dead space on the sides either, but I understand why they're going that way. I don't know what this person's name is. Preferences and rules. I forgot about this. It's broke. All right. Never mind. I changed my mind. Just begin. Wait. Deselected my icon. No, it didn't. Oh, that's right. They're not in here. Leshy aren't in here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Don't get me wrong, I do agree with you, Bardo. But I also understand what they're doing. Um, so it's kind of like... Kitties. Hmm. Dex and charisma with a with a negative to wisdom. Hmm. Dex and charisma with a negative to constitution. So are kobolds kind of the... Are kobolds kind of the... Oh. Crap, dude. I... <laughs> having been... Having been away from D&D Beyond for so long, I'm like, I forgot what they're called. Dragonborn. God damn it. My mind has been slowly deleting D&D Beyond information. During the whole, whole OGL stuff, I was all like, all right, disassociate yourself from D&D Beyond. We got to start figuring something else out. Dragonborn. Thank you. Rat folk. Dexterity and intelligence with a loss of strength. Are they small? Yeah, they're small. 
Tengu Bird Bros. Sick. Flightless birds, though. Okay. It's not okay. I just I had to go back to D&D Beyond for our uh for our campaigns. And now that OGL is the OGL fiasco is kind of done for the part at least for 5e. Let them let them fuck over one D&D for all I care. Not going to sign up for that anyway. You have a beak unarmed attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage. Your beak is in the brawling weapon group and has the finesse and unarmed traits. <laughs> oh god, that sounds awesome. One D six piercing. Isn't that better than a dagger? Aren't daggers like one D four? Backstab one with your beak. If you're a rogue, you just backstab with your beak. Smash. Take that nerd. There are very few dark vision. Orcs are dark vision. Kobolds are dark vision. I don't even have to look at humans. Keen vision. Okay, so they don't have light a, a light sensing vision, but they could technically detect invisible creatures on a check. Oh. You sneaky bastards. Goblins have dark. Dwarves have dark. So it seems like they've taken half what would it, what would roughly be half of the dark vision characters in low light instead. To kind of like give you an, an additional option. Or you get dark vision with a heritage. That's fair. Let's look at Tengu. Tengu heritage. When you gain the doomed condition. Doomed? Attempt a DC 17 flat check. On a success, the, res the re reduce the value of the doomed condition by one. What the hell is doomed? Can I just search here? Doomed. The doomed, dying, unconscious, and wounded conditions all relate to the process of coming closer to death. Oh! The dying value at which you would die is reduced by your doomed value. If your maximum dying value is zero, you instantly die. 
When you die, you're no longer doomed. Well, that's convenient. Ouch. <laughs> oh, everything's gone. All one selection I made. Okay. Disrupt undead. Interesting. Skyborn. Take no damage from falling regardless of the distance. Wow. That's sick. Storm tossed. You automatically succeed at a flak check to target a concealed creature that is concealed by rain or fog. Alland. Yeah, let's go with Talend. Ability boosts. Let's stick with the defaults. Dexterity. Uh. Let me look at class for a second. Monk. Are monk attacks strength or dex based? Or either? You you select. Okay. Wait, I didn't I didn't do my level. Sorry. 5. Okay, dex. Let's go dex and on. Gotta get them hit points, right? <laughs> squawk! Let out an awkward squawk. Ruffle your feathers or fake some other bird like tick to cover up a social faux pas. You get a failure on the triggering check rather than a crit failure. All creatures that witnessed you squawk are temporarily immune for 24 hours. <laughs> Could you imagine? You just crit fail and then you just go like... <laughs> so fucking stupid. Oh. God, I love it. Wind and lightning have always been a close friend to you. Cast the electric arc cantrip. Does this have a requirement? Apparently as a monk I can cast spells. An arc of lightning leaps from one target to another. You deal electricity damage to 1d4 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. At a 30 foot range. Actually that's pretty cool for a monk to have a ranged... Like it doesn't do a lot of damage. But it's some it's it is a ranged attack for a monk, which is convenient. In access to Kakaras.
The weapon is a shove. It's two. Oh, it has a two-handed with a D10. Versatile. What? What the fuck is this thing? A staff which is topped with a metal circle, from which hangs smaller rings that jingle and clang noisily as the staff is moved, allowing you to announce your presence and scare off wild animals. Oh. So it's a it's a it's a staff. You can use this weapon to shove with an athletic skill if you don't have a free hand. This uses the weapon's reach if it's different from my own. What is the rep weapon's reach? I don't know. And adds the weapon's item bonus to the attack roll if the item bonus... Wait, what? Adds the weapon's item bonus to attack rolls as an item bonus to the athletics check. If you critically fail a check to shove using this weapon, you can drop the weapon to take the effects of a failure instead of a critical failure. Two-handed. You can wield it with two hands. Okay. Versatile weapon can be used to deal different types of damage than listed on the damage entry. This is... 1d6 blunt... Or if I'm, or I can do piercing. And if I'm two-handing it, it's a d10. So I can either smack somebody with it or poke them. Okay, makes sense. Club. You knock the target away from you, up to ten feet. I choose the distance. This is forced movement. That's actually a pretty good weapon for a monk, too. Choose two weapons from the sword group. You can choose from among all common martial swords, plus the katana, temple sword, and wazaka, wa wakazashi. For the purpose of determining your proficiency, that weapon is a simple weapon. If the weapon isn't common, you gain access to it. You are trained in all martial weapons. You add... Common swords to the swords you can choose from. Let's go with Storm's Lash first. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get Tengu Weapon Familiarity, because that... That... That Kakarus? Kakarus. Think I'm close? Artisan, Artist, Bandit, Barber, Barkeep, Barrister, Blessed... I'm a bookkeeper. Feral child. Partial discipline? <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. Kind of like that one. Scout, scout, servant. There we are. Tax collector. Let's go with martial discipline. Ability boot. Dex. Ability boot. Uh. Go.
constitution. Can I skip something up here? No, I selected it. Alright. Level 1 for a monk. Ability boost. Again, dex on wisdom. Uh... Intelligence. Skill training. Acrobatics, yes. Uh Stealth, yes. Thievery, no. Go with survival. Athletics. Hmm. Medicine. Religion. That seems fair. The abilities. Dex. Monk feet. No, I want to use hands. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Brain stance. Would that be funny for a uh, Tengu? Plus one to AC, but. The only strikes I can make are crane wing attacks. Dragon stance. Like monastery weaponry, I'll, I'll get there. While in dragon stance, you could wait. What you could ignore the first square of difficult terrain while striding. If you step, do you just? Well, I guess a step would not be affected by difficult terrain, would it? I was about to ask if stepping does difficult terrain have any effect, but then I was like, by definition of step, no. <laughs> the step is always one square. Or hex or whatever. You lower yourself to the ground and take an imposing and knuckle walking stance. The only strikes I can make are gorilla, gorilla slammed unarmed attacks. Seems like dragon's the best one because dragon doesn't limit you to the type of attacks you can make. All right, key rush. I'm guessing key spells are just like regular spells. They're not fully implemented yet. This is actually kind of kind of cool. Key rush takes one action, um, but you get to move twice. So for for a single action, you get two actions of movement out of it. No, no, I'm sorry. I know what key, I know what key spells are. I'm just saying like. They're, they're saying spells have not been implemented into the, uh, the Nexus yet. 
I'm assuming key spells are also also fall under that uh, that category. They're not implemented yet. That's super cool. A double move, essentially. Key strike. You gain key strike. Make an unarmed strike or flurry of blows. Ah ha 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 ha. This doesn't change the limit on using only one flourish per turn. The damage can be any one of the following types of your choice. Choose each one. Choose each time you strike. Force, negative, positive, or lawful if you're law if you are law. Damage type, lawful damage? What the fuck? <laughs> like force damage, okay. Negative, uh, okay. Positive? Lawful damage. Take that, criminal laws. <laughs> no, I understand that. I understand lawful as an as an alignment, but lawful as a damage type sounds weird. Monastic archer. You can use Flurry of Blows with these bows. You can use other monk feats or monk abilities that would normally require unarmored attacks with these bows. And when attacking within half the first range increment, normally 50 feet for a long bow or 30 for a short bow, so long as the feat or ability doesn't require a single specific strike. So it's ranged monks. Damn, son, that's sick. Monastic weaponry. When you are prof when your proficiency rank for unarmed attacks increases from expert to master, the proficiency rank for these weapons increases from expert to master. You can use the melee monk weapons with any of your monk feats or monk abilities that normally require unarmed attacks, though not if the feat or ability requires you to use a specific type of attack. I'd need to see a list of monastic weapons. Mountain stance. One D eight bludgeoning. You gain a plus four item bonus to AC and plus two circumstance bonus against being shoved or tripped. You have a Dex modifier cap to your AC of zero, meaning you don't add your Dex to your AC, and your speeds are all reduced by five feet. But the item bonus to AC from Mountain Stance is cumulative with armor potency runes on Explorer Clothing, Mage Armor, or Braces of Wow, dude. That's a tank right there. You just always want to be in Mountain Stance. Stumbling.
Plus one bonus to deceptions. Only strikes you can make are stumbling, swinging, unarmed attacks. If any, if an enemy hits you with a melee strike while in this stance, it becomes flat-footed against the next stumbling swing you make against. It. Wow. So this is like drunken master stuff. Holy crap. 1d8 slashing damage. On critical successes, the target takes 1d4 bleed. And as long as my speed is 20, you can step 10 feet. Step doesn't trigger uh, 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 attacks of opportunity, does it? Only, uh, only stride. Wow, that's really good. I'm gonna take key strike first. Stunning fist. Elemental Fist. Wow. So you could do... Electric. What? Okay. What's the difference between damage type and tr uh, damage traits? So electricity damage, that's that's self-explanatory. But it gains the air trait. What does that mean? Gains the water trait. Gains the earth trait. Hmm. 
water tra or air trait, right? Look at it in the rule book. Ah, oh, it doesn't link to anything. Wouldn't that give it the ability to damage something more than is weak to that trait? Don't know. This says any ability with the air trait that involves blowing or shifting wind deals you 1d6 bludgeoning damage per level of the spell each round that you are in the area in addition to its normal effect. So are traits kind of like lores where there's an infinite number of traits and it's kind of more dependent on Whether or not something is also, like, where's air trait? So, deals electricity damage. So, something can be susceptible to electricity. But they could also have the air trait, in which case I may or I may do more or do less damage according to what their trait dictates. Maybe? I really understand that. I would need some clarification on that one, on how traits work. Ill feed. These are all, again, all these feats, the requirements don't work exactly. Discreet inquiry. Expert in deception or diplomacy. I am an expert in neither. Strength 16. Or an expert in intimidation. Or is that and an expert in intimidation? There needs to be some clarification there. Nimble crawl, crawl at a faster rate. I'm not an expert in acrobatics. That require trained in society. I am trained in society. Am I not? No, I am not. Never mind. Yeah, these these feats sorting themselves automatically by requirements. Uh, are definitely something that needs to be implemented sooner rather than later.
Let's take Catfall, because that's just a smart one. This is incredible movement. Do I have any... wait. Flurry of Blows, Powerful Fist. Monk Initial Proficiency. I guess that's just... And that's fine. Mystic Strikes. Your unarmed attacks become magical, allowing them to get past resistances to non-magical attacks. However, you still need an item such as hand wraps of mighty blows to gain an item bonus to attack rolls or increase your attack's weapon damage by. Okay. Let's do skill increase first, because that'll help. Expert in acrobatics now. Aha! The expert in acrobatics. I am. Re requirements met? No. That's obviously not functioning properly. Hello? A powerful leap. Monk feet. Gain plus four circumstance bonus to AC against the triggering attack. If attack misses, you have deflected it. You cannot use this feat to deflect unusually massive range projectile. Flurry of Maneuvers. Your guard is up even when moving. You gain a plus four bonus to AC against uh, uh, reactions triggered by my movement. Wow, that's really good. Okay, so this is essentially a uh, sentinel. Except I have to critically hit to stop them. And guarded movement is really smart. Assurance. Train in at least one skill.
Multilingual, no. Trained in society. Oh, well that would explain that one. Uh Pilgrim's token, a religious token that lets you act first on a tie for initiative. Trained in religion, aren't I? Yeah. Three lips. Trained in society. I'm not trained in society, though. No. Alertness. Practice martial arts and now have surpassed your former skill. The proficiency rank for unarmed attacks and simple weapons increases to expert. Okay. Skill increase. Uh, let's go into society. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that needs society. Tengu Weapon Study. Wait, whenever you hit? Critically hit. Oh, so I wouldn't get the critical specialization yet. One Toad Hop. Long Nosed Form. Eat fortune. As someone tries to twist fate, you consume the interference. The triggering effect is disrupted. Fortune and misfortune is advantage and disadvantage, right? Essentially. That would be really good. Ability boost. Uh, constitution. Wisdom. Intelligence. And, and I guess dex. Gives me another skill. I'm a master in acrobatics. That's pretty sick. AC 27. Holy Christ. That's bananas. You gain a plus 10 foot bonus. Status bonus to your can't read the rest of that. Uh, 
Spells don't work. <laughs> Picture obviously does not work now. Neither does the name. Uh, bird? Where bird? Where burb? You know burb. No oh, burb. Am I missing one? No. Legit no bird. Sad. Bird. Bird monk. Change the name bird monk. Save changes. Hmm. 